Hi students, so today we start lecture 27 in our course and today I am going to discuss drag divergence mark number. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now what happens is that if you typically look at the drag coefficient CD with respect to the mark number, then this essentially has a pretty constant value for a long time and then to reach the critical mark number after which there is a slight increase and after the drag divergence mark number it starts to increase quite dramatically. So this point of the drag divergence mark number MDD is the point at which the drag coefficient starts increasing dramatically and this is certainly a problem because if you are flying at sufficiently high speed if you cross this particular mark number you are going to encounter enormous drag and so this is going to act as a barrier to you in terms of your propulsive capacity. So unless you have engines which are very powerful, you are not going to be able to cross this so-called sound barrier, which is going to take place at Mach number one. So essentially this was something which restricted the flight in the supersonic regimes for a long time to come. And people were not able to cross the sound barrier. They were using straight wings. They were using thick airfoils. And so they had a lot of problems. Now, the total drag on the airfoil is given by three components. We are now familiar with two of these very closely. For example, skin friction drag and pressure drag. And also there is a third component, which is known as wave drag, which comes from compressibility effect. So that's what we see in the drag divergence mark number situation. Now, of course, we know that skin friction drag comes from the viscosity of the air. It's directly proportional to the shear stresses which act in the boundary layer. The pressure drag comes from flow separation and flow separation takes place because of various physical phenomena which we have discussed before. And also the effect of boundary layer plays a role in the flow separation. And finally, we are going to look at wave drag later. This is a very important concept and Wave drag again starts happening because of the presence of shock waves which are going to show up and these are going to cause pressure differentials which are going to lead to drag in the system. So this is the source of wave drag. So we can write the total drag as the skin friction drag plus the pressure drag plus the wave drag. And if we look at the drag coefficients, it's going to become CD is CDF plus CDP plus CDW where F is friction, P is pressure, and W is wave drag. Now let's just recapitulate something we learned in the previous lecture, which was that typically if you are flying your aircraft or airfoil at some particular flight speed, if you are at a Mach number which is lower than the critical Mach number, then all the points on the surface of the airfoil are going to have Mach numbers below one, even at the peak velocity point. So this is something very important that in this kind of situation, you essentially have a completely subsonic flow situation. However, if you are flying at the critical Mach number, then there is going to be one point where Mach number is going to become one and this is going to take place at the peak velocity point. So this is the point at which you start encountering or you encounter the sonic flow situation for the first time in an airfoil. Now the interesting thing is that this mark critical can be something which is like 0.7 and your M is one here. So even at a mark number of 0.7, which is substantially below one, there are airfoils where you will encounter this kind of mark number one here. So essentially you have reached sonic flow, even though you are flying at much lower than sonic flow. And that is because the air expands on the top surface and so it picks up speed and therefore you get this higher Mach number. Now, if you continue to fly faster than the critical Mach number, but slower than the drag divergence Mach number, then what's going to happen is that there is a region of M greater than one, which is going to form on the top surface of the airfoil in the vicinity of the maximum Mach number point. And so, this particular bubble or region is known as the supersonic bubble. And so this is a phenomena you encounter when you fly between the critical Mach number and the drag divergence Mach number. Now, remember that outside the supersonic bubble, the flow is going to remain subsonic. So M is going to be less than one. 
but in this region m is going to be greater than 1. Now to continue to fly faster and faster you are going to exceed the drag divergence Mach number and so at this point what's going to happen is that there is a shock wave which is going to form and in front of the shock wave or ahead of the shock wave m is going to be greater than 1 but after the shock wave m is going to become less than 1 so again this is the region in red where m is going to be greater than 1 and this particular situation is also going to lead to flow separation so, so this is something like a shock induced flow separation and so you are going to have separated flow here and of course you know the effect of all this flow separation is going to be that the drag is going to go up so this is one of the reasons why drag goes up after the drag divergence mark number is crossed so let's again look at this picture now we will have a better idea about why things are happening so CD, the drag coefficient versus the Mach number. You reach the critical Mach number, you keep flying faster, you get the supersonic bubble, you cross the drag divergence Mach number, you start getting shocks. So your separation flow starts happening or flow separation and you continue going like this and you finally encounter the sound barrier situation in this case. So this is essentially the explanation of why the drag starts going up quite dramatically. It's the shock wave formation and the resultant pressure differentials and the flow separation. So how can we increase the drag or how does the drag increase at high Mach number? Now we see that shock waves are inherently dissipative, which means that shock waves lead to a lot of dissipation or losses. And therefore, whenever there are losses, there is drag. And flow separation is also facilitated by the presence of shock. So these phenomena lead to large increases in drag in the region, which are greater than the drag divergence Mach number, and even to ex some extent in the region, which is more than the critical Mach number. Now, there's one thing you will see in general that the drag divergence Mach number lies between the critical Mach number and one. So the location is something like this. So if M critical is 0.7, maybe MDD is 0.8, and then you have one there, which is the sonic Mach number. Now, there are certain airfoils known as supercritical airfoils, which have been designed such that the shock waves are weak. And if you take a conventional airfoil and you start to fly it at transonic velocities, you are going to encounter strong shock waves, and that is going to result in very substantial flow separation and high increase in drag. However, if you were to use supercritical airfoils, which are shaped somewhat like this, then you are going to have a weak shock wave and that's going to result in a weaker shock and we are also going to result in less flow separation. So the net result of using such airfoils is that your cruise speed can be increased for transonic airplanes and that's something you really want to do because if you are flying in any typical aircraft which flies between two cities, between point A and B, if you are flying, let's say, between Bangalore and London or between New York and Singapore, then you want to fly as fast as possible. You don't want to hang around in the airplane for a very long time. So one of the ways to do that is to increase MDD and increasing MDD is possible by using specially designed airfoils such as supercritical airfoils. Now, this of course is an area of research. You can use computational fluid dynamics modeling to essentially look at a generic airfoil shape and keep changing the airfoil shape to get the best possible flight characteristic. Now, this can also be done using numerical optimization type of method. So optimization plays a very big role as far as airfoil design is concerned. If any of you guys are interested in optimization, I have a whole lecture series on that in my YouTube channel. And you can check it out in case I don't remember to put something on the end screen of this particular video. Please let me know in the comment section. Now to summarize what we learned today, we saw that drag coefficient starts increasing dramatically after the drag divergence Mach number is exceeded. And this is also the source of the sound barrier, which is going to require considerably higher level of propulsive power, which actually required the presence of jet engines or gas turbine situations because the typical piston engines were not powerful enough to cross the sound barrier. We also saw that there is something known as a supersonic bubble, which forms on the airfoil top surface. And this is a 
situation which also leads to deleterious effects. We also saw that the Mach number typically between M critical and between MDD is the point where this supersonic bubble forms. Now, of course, remember that when M is M critical, there is only one sonic point here. When you cross M critical, but you are below MDD, that sonic point has increased to a bubble. So there are now a set of sonic points or greater than sonic points, which cumulatively form the supersonic bubble. Now, when you continue to fly faster and faster, if your Mach number had crossed the drag divergence Mach number, then you are going to get a shock wave formation on the top surface, and this is going to lead to flow separation, which is going to lead to considerable drag. So again, the shock wave itself is also a dissipative phenomena, so that also causes drag because of pressure differentials it creates. Now, one of the ways to increase the drag divergence Mach number is to use supercritical airfoils, which tend to weaken the shock wave formation or lead to weaker shock waves, which in turn would reduce the deleterious effects of the shock. If you were to use conventional airfoils, these shocks would be much stronger. So supercritical airfoils facilitate transonic cruise type of situations. And this is an area of very active and important research because if you are able to design airfoil sections, which can save you in terms of drag, which can delay the drag divergence Mach number, then not only you can fly, fly faster, but also you can save a lot of money because the fuel cost will become less. Because to remember that whenever you expend energy or power to overcome drag, you are essentially burning some kind of fuel. So finally, always remember that Mach critical is less than Mach DD is less than one. So again, like I mentioned, something like 0.7 would be critical Mach number, 0.8 would be drag divergence Mach number, and then one would be, of course, the sonic velocity. So that was the lecture for today. So now you are very familiar with the concepts of critical Mach number and drag divergence Mach number, and you clearly know that drag increases if Mach number goes up beyond the drag divergence Mach number, and this is not something you typically want, and that airfoil design can be used as a way to mitigate this undesirable phenomena. I'll end this video here, and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.